Hello everyone, welcome to Financial News with Channel 4. I'm Ron Jankowski with Channel 4 and Palos Heights and my co-host is Paul Municle from Ameriprise. Paul, uh, I'm, you're going to give us a summary of what took place last week. I'm sure there's lots of activity to share with the viewers. Definitely. Um, today's show, I'm going to focus on businesses and how they are spending more on productivity um, and enhancing their own equipment. So amid a shortage of human workers to produce their goods or provide their services, businesses have increasingly turned to automation to enhance or even maintain their output. So are we finally at the long predicted stage of people being replaced by machines? Well, no and yes, but in our view, mostly no. Um, business owners, have always had to balance the cost and functionality of machinery versus that of available human capital. And as annual labor force expansion rates steadily slow, in practicality, all major economies, businesses have needed to employ more equipment to boost human productivity and enable stronger growth. The demographic trends driving such circumstances have been evolving for decades. The onset of pandemic amplified the situation given its disruptive impact on the lives of workers and the labor force in general. In isolation, slower labor force growth would directly mean slower potential economic growth. At its most basic level, any country's potential economic growth rate is a function of how fast its labor force is growing times how productive those workers are. As indicated in the second half of that formula, productivity can be a powerful equalizer. Additionally, machinery is typically most efficient in performing basic tasks. These are typically low-skill, low-wage jobs. Replacing individuals currently in these functions frees them up to do more value-dated tasks, which should further, further boost wages and thus improving the standard of living and enhancing economic growth and kind of a win-win result. Um, so we will wait and see how that continues to develop. I mean, we read about it in books and we picture the days of machines taking over all the jobs of Americans and who knows when or if or what that will look like. But the pandemic has accelerated that, you know, a little bit. Yeah, it sure has. Uh, Paul, I'm going to share with the viewers a note that I have just received this morning from Ameriprise Financial and they're asking us to Sure, a need to know the S&P 500 is edging higher in early trading as U.S. large cap stocks look to add to last week's record close. So we should see a little surge. Yep, when we initially saw what was going on in Afghanistan, um, the market pulled back a bit, maybe not solely on that reason, but we did see a pullback in the market recently. But it's just been so resilient. Seeing it starting to boost higher again is not anything different than what we've been seeing lately. And the uh, yield on it, 10-year treasury is steady near 1.31% as investor attention turns to Friday, August jobs number. Yeah, we're always kind of waiting to see what the Fed's going to do with interest rates. Um, they did speak last week and there's no changes there. So we're looking for direction on fixed income and right now no movement, which is fine. Uh, this is uh, interesting to hear that the uh, oil prices dropped from a four-week high as Hurricane Ida weakened and, uh, force, and after forcing precautionary shutdowns of the U.S. Gulf oil production. So uh, they were going to shut down or they maybe started. Now they're going to swing back up again. Hopefully we'll hold the prices steadily. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, a hurricane not being as, I mean, a hurricane is bad, but not being as bad as predicted right. Is, right. is good for the oil market. And the last thing is the shares of AFIRM, AFIRM uh, are high, are sharply higher after a buy now, pay later. Company announced a partnership with Amazon. Another company going with Amazon. They're getting bigger and bigger every day. 
I don't even want to comment on that. Uh, here, here today, uh, uh, index returns are Dow Jones is a plus 17 percent, S&P 500 a plus 21 percent, and the Nasdaq a plus 17 percent. All solid. Staggering numbers. I mean, last year was staggering. Ron, you and I have been doing this show for years. I mean, there's years we had negative numbers, of course. Yes. There's years when we were looking if we can just eke out four or five percent. Remember? Right. And I mean, these are just mind blowing. So let's hope they let's take as much advantage of them as we as can. As we can. Yeah. Exactly. Well, stay with us. Um, we're going to be right back with our show called Your Money. Paul usually has a very interesting topic. Stay with us. We'll be right back. And we're back with your money, and Paul has an interesting topic. Should you pay off your mortgage, your home mortgage, early? Paul, I'm going to let you take it. Thanks, Ron. You know, I get that question a lot as a financial advisor, and it really is so dependent on everyone's situation and where they're at in life. Um, but let's go through the topic and, and see if that helps answer the question. You know, many people who carry a home mortgage dream of that day when they will no longer face the burden of monthly house bill. They want the financial freedom and the satisfaction of owning their home outright. Now does that mean you should be make you should be paying off your mortgage early a priority? You know that answer depends on your circumstances and goals. One question you should ask yourself is would the money you spend on your home loan be better spent on or invested in another financial opportunity. So getting a different perspective on debt reducing, reducing debt as early as possible could help you avoid costly interest rate charges. Um, you may have experience with this principle if you've eliminated credit card debt or a car loan. While your home mortgage is a type of debt, the same concept may not apply. In certain instances, staying true to your repayment terms, it may be the best for your financial situation for these following reasons. One, the interest rates on mortgages tend to be more reasonable than other types of credit, and the terms often provide more certainty, you know, for example, like a 30-year fixed mortgage rate. Point number two, the interest you pay can potentially be deducted from your taxes. Now this deduction makes a mortgage much more efficient on an after-tax basis than most other forms of debt. If mortgage interest is a part of your tax strategy, consider if you'll be able to itemize deductions once you own your home outright. Now on the other hand, the earlier you pay off your loan, the longer you could have the opportunity to invest the money each month. This additional investment could help you achieve a more secure financial future. To see if investing may make sense, compare your interest rate to what you could reasonably expect to earn in the market returns. Factoring in time as you evaluate your situation, you should consider the time you expect to stay in your home and how close you are to retirement. Those who are approaching retirement or are already retired may prefer to be done with the monthly expense of a mortgage. Since this is also a stage in your life when your investment approach may be more conservative. The trade-off of reducing your balance rather than investing may not be as significant. Those who are in this position may want to consider if accelerating payments today would help reduce housing expenses in retirement. The same is true for those who plan to stay in their homes for a long time. Reducing your loan may be appealing if it results in years of living without a house bill. Younger homeowners should explore methods of accelerating their mortgage paydown. Among the strategies to consider are contributing more money each month. 
refinancing your mortgage over a shorter term. So for example, going to a 15 year mortgage instead of a 30 year, or occasionally making a larger lump sum payment to reduce the balance. Considering the emotional side, um, deciding if you should carry a home mortgage is not only a rational decision, but an emotional one as well. Your home is where you raise your family, create memories, and return to each day. How important is it for you to know that you will own your home free and clear? As you think about your decision, be sure you're in a position to not jeopardize your financial security today by putting additional funds towards your home. Adjusting your monthly bill will impact your cash flow and you'll want to have flexibility in your budget to cover unexpected expenses. As always, review your financial circumstances before you decide what's right for you. And if you don't have one, call and speak with your financial advisor about that. He or she is in a position to help you make those decisions. Paul, you, you touch on something, um, having financial security, you have to make sure that you're comfortable with that decision. And yes, you're right, a financial advisor that can walk through your entire portfolio, what your income levels are and what you're trying to achieve makes sense for you not only today, but down the road, yes. Yep, I mean, the situation is so different for everyone. Everyone. I mean, you hear examples of people um, aggressively paying down their home mortgage, but then their bank account suffers. And heaven forbid, if they have a big expense, they have nowhere to go for extra money, but they're so aggressively paying down debt that they gotta take on more debt to fund that you know, unexpected expense. So there's yeah. a lot of pluses and minuses to this. And I know it seems like a generic answer, but you really, it is different for everyone. You've gotta sit down and talk to someone about it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, anything else you want to add to that, Paul? Um, just if, if anyone needs help with anything re regarding investments or financial decisions, feel free to give me a call directly at 708-226-3412. Paul, thank you for the topic. Thank you for the um, information from last week's summary. For Paul Municle with Ameriprise Financial, myself, Ron Jankowski with Channel 4 and PLO Sites, we wish you a good investment day. <laughs>